hello guys welcome to today's tutorial and in today's video i'll be showing us how to integrate the recently released firebase 9 into a react application also alongside this we'll be creating a sign in and sign up form to authenticate users by making use of the modular imports which is supported in the newly introduced firebase before we get started i would like us to take a brief overview about some of the features that are included in the newly released firebase 9 as you can see some of the new updates includes compatibility support that is if you are using previous versions of firebase you are able to update your application without any form of issues through the use of a compact library also there is support for modular imports that is instead of importing the entire firebase sdk into your application you are able to import the necessary functions needed for you to perform some particular actions so this allows for a much faster application there is also a difference of size that is the newly introduced firebase 9 is much more smaller in terms of size compared to the previous version for instance when you compare it to version 8 it's about 72 percent smaller and also another thing worthy of notes is the introduction of the firestore lights sub package this sub package allows you to create CRUD functionalities in a much lighter, faster, and simpler way. So the next step is for us to create a new project in the Firebase dashboard. And before we do that, I'd like you to subscribe as well as give a like to this video so that YouTube can keep recommending my videos and as a form of support for me to create more tutorials. So heading straight to the Firebase dashboard, I can click on Add Project. So what name can we give it? Let's give it React Fire 9 and click on continue. We ask if we want to enable Google Analytics. We don't need that. This is a very small project. So we just click on create project and then a new Firebase project is going to be generated for us. Now that our project has been created, I click on continue and then we get navigated to the dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is to head straight to the authentication tab on the sidebar and then click on get started. Then we'll be presented with a series of different ways in which we can sign into an application that is signing methods the one we're going to be working with is the email and password so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to enable it then click on save so with that our application can access the email and password authentication the next thing we need to do is to click on the pre project overview and then we we'll click on project settings we scroll down this is the Firebase config object we need to include in our application. For now, I'm going to leave it this way and head straight to Visual Studio Code. As you can see, I already created a new project using Create React App. I believe you can do the same. What Create React App does is to generate for us a boilerplate template, which contains a public folder as well as the SRC folder, which will contain the files we want to create in this project before i proceed i will also need to install firebase in this application so right in the roots of our application i'm going to type in npm install firebase so while that is installing i'm going to create a .env file to set up our project settings for firebase so in the roots of our application i click on the file icon and then type in .env press enter and then inside this file so i'm going to paste the firebase settings what we did there was to set up the firebase config object we had in our firebase dashboard but one of the things you need to note is that for each of the variables we have here each one starts with react underscore app this is very important because without this this env file will not be accessible throughout the project and also is worthy to note that by default create react app supports the .env package with so we do not need to run npm install .env so up next in the src folder i'm going to create a new folder called auth and inside of this folder i'm going to create a new file called firebase.js so inside this firebase.js file what we are going to do is to import the necessary modules we need to initialize the firebase application so quickly i'm going to type in import initialize app from firebase for slash app and then and then i'm going to create a new variable called firebase config so i'll type in export const firebase config is equals to so instead of typing in 
each of the project settings firebase project settings here i'm gonna copy and paste it so i grab this set of code then i paste this in so what we have here is not strange we created a new variable and each of these variable is access is accessing the variables we have in the .cmv file that is the firebase api key the firebase or domain project id storage buckets messaging id as well as the app id so because firebase by default supports the .env package we are able to access it through process.env so now we have access to everything in the .env file i believe this is pretty much clear and straightforward so next up i get create a new variable called firebase and then i call the initialize app we import above and then type in the firebase config variable then finally we type in export default firebase so that's all we need to do i'm going to save everything in this file as well as in the env file and then check we have if our firebase already installed in our terminal which we already do so i'm going to clear the console and then i'm going to clear the terminal and then type in npm start so if i check the package.json you can see we have firebase 9 already imported into the package.json file which is really cool so next thing i want to do is to create two new files so the first file i'm going to create which is going to be in the src directory is called signin.js so quickly i just create a new file signin.js sign is going to be in capital letters or package and then the second one is called signup.js so in the signup.js file let's generate boilerplate template by running rufc then i press enter so we have a functional component here so what we need to do here is to creates a set of input fields that take in email as well as password that we're going to submit to the firebase dashboard so i'm going to paste that in here so what you can see here is an h2 header tag that has a sign up and then a label tag as well as an input tag for the email fields a label tag as well as an input tag for the password field so this does not have any form of design i want this tutorial to be as fast as possible so that we can get the idea behind the newly introduce firebase 9 in a react application so i save and then i import this sign up functional components in the app.js file so quickly i just type in sign up as you can see it is imported above then i can click save and then head to the browser to see if you can see it on the page so we have an error that says sign up.js does not match the corresponding name i think we might have made a mistake so i head back to the browser i correct this is an upper case supposed to be in lowercase then i save once more and head back to the browser as you can see we have a sign up form that contains a input field that has an email as well as a password so what we need to do next is to try to log the data we type into each of the field into the console when we click on submit so to do that i head straight to the sign up functional components and then i bring in a new react book called use states and then i create a new set of variables so quickly here i'm going to type in const input field and then set input field is equals to use state use state is going to take in a set of objects for the two input fields we created the first one is going to be called the email it's going to be an empty string and then the second is going to be called password which also is going to contain an empty string and it's worthy to know that the first part of the variable in the use state hook is called the getter and then the set input field here is called the setter so you understand better as we go as we follow along so for us to log the values in the console we need to create another variable here called unchange so i'm going to type in const unchange is equals to e and then we create an arrow function then we can type in e dot prevent default so also within this function we create two variables a name and a value which is going to be extracted from the targets from the events targets in the form so quickly you can just do that by typing in name as well as value and this can be gotten from e dot targets and then the next thing we need to do is to call the setter we created above which is called the set input field so i'm gonna grab that and then it's gonna take in an arrow function we can call the first variable in the arrow function brief states and then we can destructure the brief, brief states value here and then also 
set the name value attributes of the form yes i think that's all we need to do so so in each of the input fields i, I can just set up an unchanged event handler which comes by default with with react so i type in unchange is equals to unchange and then in the second input field which is in the password field i can also paste that in and also we need to create a value attribute so in the value attributes we can just type in value is equals to open a curly brace bracket and then type in the setter which is input field dot the first form is the first field is called email and then in the second field we have input field dot password so for us to see the value we need to create a submit handler as well so in the button i can just type in on click is equals to submit button so let's create the submit button function so const submit button is equals to an arrow function and then we can console log the input field and then head back to the browser okay we have an error use state cannot be called on top level react hook okay i think we might have made a slight error somewhere everything we've created is outside of the functional component so everything needs to be within so that's the error we made so i'm going to paste that within save and then head back to the browser i don't know why i made make such errors so quickly let me open the console and inside of the console what email can we type let's just type in a random email i can just type in abcd at gmail.com and then for the password we can type in one two three four five six and let's click on submit to see if we can get the value in the console as you can see we have the value for the email as well as the password in the console so this is awesome so what we need to do next is to send both these values to our firebase dashboard to ensure that we've created a new user so straight heading straight back to vs code what we need to do next is to bring in some modules from firebase so first thing i'm going to do is to import firebase from the file in which we created the firebase settings so that would be dot slash auth slash firebase as well as the modules we intend to use which are just two normally in previous versions of firebase we are going to bring in the entire firebase library into this project but for now we just need two functions or two modules the first one is get out and then the second one is to is the create user with email and password from firebase slash out so with this we are good to go so the first of the modules we imported we're going to use is the get auth so i'm going to create a new variable called const auth is equals to get auth get auth is going to take in the firebase config update we created in this auth folder the, what we created here this project settings firebase settings for the initializer app to function properly so that's what get auth is taken in here and then the next function for us to create a new user is the create user with email and password so i'm going to copy this and then this is going to be done inside of the submit button so i'm going to type in create user with email and password and it's going to take in three arguments previous version it takes in just two user two arguments that's the email and the password this time around it's taking in the auth so then so what we're going to do is to type in auth which we created above and then we type in input field dot email as well as impute field dot password so what this does is it returns a promise so we can subscribe to it with the dot then in javascript so i type in dot then and then it returns to us a user credentials so i'm going to type in user credentials and then create an arrow function and inside of the arrow functions two things are going to happen is either we have a successful sign up or we have a failure so if you have a successful sign up you can create a variable that says const user is equals to user credentials dot user and then for us to know the type of user that gets signed up you can just console log that value in the console but the way we're going to confirm this is let's straight to the dashboard and see if that user has been created so i type in user and then the second scenario is if there's an error then we need to catch the error so to catch the error we can just type in dot catch the dot catch takes in an error argument so we can just alert an error message so i can type in alert 
error dot message perfect so i'm gonna save and then head straight to the browser once more let the page refresh and then let's try to create a new user so i'm gonna type in abcd at gmail.com and then one two three four five six click on submit and i think we have a successful sign up because we are getting a user object in the console which is in the first scenario where if we have a successful user the form should log us a, the values of the user so we have some very important details in these objects like the access token the display name the email and the like so ultimately we need to check the dashboard to ensure this user has been created so i head straight to the authentication sidebar and then as you can see we have a new user which is called abcd at gmail.com which is perfect so in the case of if we want a scenario where there is an error what can we do let's see let's remove the entire gmail part and then click on submit by default this is no longer an email so if i click on submit we get an error from firebase itself that says auth slash invalid email so with this we cannot sign up without entering a proper email address address which is awesome so with this created with the sign up form created let's create the signing form so the signing form is also similar to what we have here so what i'm going to do is to grab everything in this file and then head over to signing.js paste it in then we need to make use of some refactoring so the first thing we need to refactor is the name of the functional component which is sign up so i'm going to change this to sign in and then in the function or module we brought into the application instead of having a create user with email and password what we are going to have is sign in with email and password great so i'm going to replace that in this part of the form so this also takes in three arguments the auth which we have above here the input field dot email and the input field dot password it contains the value of our email and our password so i think that's all we need to do okay also in the header we need to change this from sign up to sign in and then our app.js i'm going to bring in the signing components while commenting out the sign up components so this will be signing as well as signing and then signing so let's see if every change we've made and then head straight to the browser to see if our changes have been properly implemented so um i think i think so so let's let's try to sign in so we can do that by typing in the email which i think is abc let me just grab this email just to be safe i can't let's not make any form of um guess so i'm gonna type in that email and then the password is one two three four five six and i click on submit and there you go uh user has been signed in properly because we get this objects in our user objects in our console so let's say we try to enter a wrong email address and i click on submit you see we get an error message directly from firebase that says "Auth user not found which is excellent so if you are not signed up you can't log in i think that's it for this tutorial over the course of um, the next few weeks or months i'll try to implement a fully firebase a fully functional firebase project using react and also i also look at creating an angular application with um, the newly introduced firebase as well but for today that's all we have um if you like the video if you learn something from it make sure you like give it a like as well as subscribe and i will see you again in the next video